So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Camelita podcast. This is where you learn to live like a champion. On today's episode, I have got the one, the only, America's own sleep doctor, Mr. Dr. Michael. Let me properly introduce you to him (laughs) so you know. I met him years and years and years ago. He's a clinical psychologist both a diplomat of the American Board of Sleep Medicine. He'll explain what that means. And a fellow of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Like sleep is a medicine. I, I, we, we need to understand this, okay? Yep. He is the author of so many books and his new book is coming out, which he'll tell us about and how we can get a hold of it. He is named the top sleep specialist in California by Reader's Digest. All of us know of Reader's Digest and one of the 10 most influential sleep people in sleep in the world. And look at this. He's on the clinical advisory board of Dr. Oz. Now, if you don't know Dr. Oz, Google it. You you need to know Dr. Oz. Right. Let's get into it now. His second book, The Sleep Doctor Diet Plan, helps people with weight loss. This is the one I'm intrigued about. And the author of The Power Within is talking all about you have the power to have a better life, better sex, you know, run better, eat better, like how many of us want to know how to do that better? Um, he's a consultant of, to, to, to heart. And he's a teacher and a trainer and an educator. He's a spokesman for so many places. Princess Cruise Lines, I'm sure he gets on really well there. Uh, six cents hotels and spa and the list is endless. And I think this is really powerful because he's been interviewed CNN, The View, Oprah, no, Rachel Ray, Fox and Friends, The Doctors, CBS. I mean, the list is endless. Just Google him, you'll see it. But more importantly, his topic on expertise is the science of sleep and peak performance. He has been interviewed about sleep disorders and also sleep hacking for peak performers. Welcome, because I can't wait to hear this one today. Welcome, <laughs> Dr. Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Camelita. You're so sweet. I'm so excited to be back in your presence. You have such a glowing radiation of positivity. I just, I love every bit of it. So thank you for having me on your show today. Oh, look, Dr. Dr. Michael, I need to sleep better. Like, seriously, help me. Like, <laughs> everybody is listening. Just, like, you know, like, yeah, forget everybody for a minute. Help me. <laughs> sure. Why is it, why is it so important that we have really good sleep? Now, sure. And so we, at first, I want you to explain that to us. Tell us, tell us. Mm-hmm. So first of all, the big thing to remember is that sleep affects every organ system, every disease wow. state. Wow. Literally everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wow. Right? So we know that we think more quickly. Our memory works better. Our focus is better. Our attention is better mm-hmm. when we sleep well. We know that physically we perform Uh, better when we sleep well. As an example, if you're sleep deprived, and we'll describe what that definition means to everybody in just a moment, um, sleep deprivation causes all kinds of problems. As an example, we know that in men, their testosterone drops 30% with three to five bad nights of sleep. That's like if you're if you're a basketball player playing in the NBA and you're 22 years old, if you don't get good sleep for a couple of nights, you're playing like a 33 year old. Right. Like that's not going to be too good. Reaction time slows down when you're tired. Why is that important? Do you drive a car? Then it's important. Right. Those kind of things are important. Then also emotionally sleep becomes important Mm. because during our dream state and during uh, REM sleep is one of the places where we help process those emotions. Right. We work through our anger our fear, our joy, all of the things that happen in our lives um, happen a lot of the time during sleep. Okay, okay, Um, okay. stop, 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 stop. This is too good, (laughs) this is too good, oh, seriously. Why is it that very few people talk about this issue? Like I'm listening to you, okay? Mm -hmm. And for all the audience that's listening, and I'm gonna be sharing this video as well as the audio. For all of us who are peak performers, who are going after it, you know, we wanna do this, we wanna do that, we wanna do this, and we deprive ourselves of sleep because we wanna get more done What are we actually doing to our mind, our body, our souls? So we're doing a disservice for sure. So there was a very, very interesting study that I think will uh, be a great example for all of us. So one question that I get asked all the time by entrepreneurs, successful Mm, people mm, is, mm. can I catch up on my sleep on the weekends? Yes. So if I only get five, five and a half hours of sleep during the week, 
and I get eight or nine on the mm -hmm. weekends. Mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm go, mm -hmm. go, go all week. Mm -hmm. Is this okay, Michael? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, unfortunately, it's not. And I'm going to explain why. Really great study came out about five months ago where they had 36 people and they followed them for six weeks. Okay. Long-term study. Here's what they did. They gave them five and a half hours during the week and eight hours makeup sleep on the weekends. And then every Monday, they would test them on memory, mm -hmm. focus, mood, and attention. Those were the big four things that they were most interested in, which makes a lot of sense for entrepreneurs, you know, people in business. Those are the, the mm -hmm. skills that you really want to be well-defined, right? So the first Monday that they looked at them, um, we started to see a small decrement. The next Monday was another one. The next Monday was mm -hmm. another one. By the time the six weeks got there, people mm -hmm. were functioning at about 50% of their normal pre-baseline level. Oh, no, no. Here's the most interesting part. When they were surveyed each Monday, everyone thought that they were at 100%, even in the last week. So the data shows that you're not doing well, but your brain thinks that you are. So our brains are tricking ourselves into thinking that we'll get more done when we're sleep deprived, but we make careless errors. We make mm. poor judgment calls. All of those things can, can occur uh, during that period of time. The other big thing that people have to understand from an entrepreneur's perspective and why do I need to sleep and what does it do for me kind mm -hmm. of thing is the bottom line is when people are in an entrepreneurial startup mode, they end up drinking a lot of caffeine, right? <laughs> right? Guilty. Right. It's you like, who bought the pack so of Red Bulls, right? We're, we got to pound out a business plan here, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. And so remember, caffeine has a pretty long half-life to it. So caffeine yep. stays in our system between six and eight hours. Wow. Most people don't know that. But here's a statistic that I just learned that's even more wow. interesting. The quarter life of caffeine. So 25% of caffeine is still in your system 12 hours later. Think about that for a second. So if you have your last cup of coffee at four o'clock in the afternoon at 4 a.m., 25% of that caffeine is still wandering around your brain. My God. Now, so the, but you don't feel it because again, it's such a small amount, but your sleep feels it. You know okay? what? This is so good. I, if I drink coffee after 12 o'clock, I cannot mm. sleep at night. Yeah, of course. Not. I could only drink coffee first thing in the morning. Right. So that, so exactly. But here's what happens is when you're trying to pound out a business plan or fix, <laughs> you know, your, your website or fix the email list or whatever yeah, it is yeah, that you're yeah, out yeah, there yeah, trying yeah, yeah. to do, you're doing it at 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, 12 30, 1 30, 2 30, right? There's, there's a never ending to-do list yes. when you are starting up a business. Yes, yes, yes. And many people start walking down that path and they caffeine up and they keep going until they just drop at the end of the night. Remember everyone, sleep is not an on off switch. It's like slowly pulling your foot off the gas and slowly putting your foot on the brake. There's a process that needs mm -hmm. to occur there. And I can guarantee people, guarantee people, if, if you had a regular sleep schedule, mm -hmm. Choose it, whatever you want it to be. And I'll, I can give you some hints in a little mm -hmm, while. Mm -hmm. But if you have a regular sleep schedule, your body knows what to do and when to do it. And then everything becomes more efficient. Okay, Let me tell you right one it. more story. Stay Wait, right I got to tell you one more story. I got to tell you one more story. So when I started this whole journey, mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to do was monitor my own sleep. I mean, I'm the sleep mm -hmm. doctor for God's <laughs> sake, right? Better, better look at it. So I said to myself, I've been telling people for years, the most important thing to do is wake up at the same time every single day, not even go to bed, but wake up at the same time. It restarts your circadian rhythm on the same point every oh. single morning and gives you this level of consistency. So my wake up time was 7.30. Okay. I went to bed at midnight, woke up at 7.30, midnight, 7.30. After about three months, naturally, I started to wake up at 7.15, still going to bed at midnight. Oh. Three more months, I started to go to bed at seven wake up at seven rather three more months at 6 45 i wake up at 6 15 i go to bed at midnight still and i wake up at 6 15 i'm the sleep doctor and i'm getting six hours and 15 minutes of sleep how is that healthy or good michael let mm -hmm. me answer that what's happened is my sleep has consolidated so the thing that people have to understand is it's not about okay, wait, wait, the wait, wait, amount. Wait, wait, wait. It's about what the do you quality. Mean, what do you mean the sleep has consolidated? What do you mean? That's what I'm explaining. So here's what, so when people think of sleep, they only think of sleep in minutes. Correct. Hours, right? Correct. I think of sleep in stages. 
Ooh. like REM sleep and slow wave sleep and those things. And when I look with my aura ring, because I tracked my sleep with my, yeah. my sleep tracker here, what I discovered is I was getting the same amounts of the deep sleep. And what I was getting less of was stage two sleep, which is very light sleep, not necessarily Whoa. necessary. So by maintaining a consistent schedule, I actually sleep less and feel better. Wow. Let wow. Me repeat that. Okay, by I want one of those. <laughs> By maintaining my schedule, I sleep less and I have more energy. Pretty cool. Right. right. Everybody else listening, I need that help. Do you know what I mean? I need that help, right? <laughs> How do you then, when you run multiple businesses, which I do, how do you then structure your life and your time that's right. To make that happen. Because I'm willing. I'm telling you the mm -hmm. truth. I am so willing. Okay. So yep. tell us. So I have a routine that I follow. I'm very regimented and it works really, really well. Right. Now there's different parts to the routine and people shouldn't just, you know, bolt on a new routine. You need to talk mm -hmm. with your doctor, make sure things are okay. But what I do is I have very consistently do different things. So as an example, I have a morning routine and I have an evening routine. Right? Right. Let's talk about the evening routine first. So my evening routine, I, again, I told you I go to bed around midnight. Mm -hmm. So starting at 11 o'clock at night, I take that hour before I go to bed and I chop it up into three 20 minute segments, 20 minutes for just the last things I got to do. So maybe it's an email, usually in our house, it's finding kids sports equipment, <laughs> you know, getting backpacks ready for school or camp or whatever, you know how that story goes, right? Then 20 minutes for hygiene. Brush your, face, brush your teeth, wash your face, maybe take a, an evening shower mm -hmm. um, or a hot bath. And then 20 minutes for some type of meditation, relaxation, prayer. Ooh. Remember, something to, you need runway to land the plane, Ooh. right? And that's where you, everything starts to slow down. And that's where you have your commitment to yourself mm -hmm. and to your soul and to your spirituality, right? Wow. And that's incredibly important aspect to do, especially just before bed, right? Because you settle. So many people tell me, they're like, I can't turn off my brain. Yes, but I was going to ask you, what about the anxiety of, oh my God, I didn't get this done. Oh my God, I want to do more. Right, I mean, right, how right. do you deal with that anxiety? I need to get this done before. Mm -hmm. So I make a list. I call it a worry journal. I don't do this right before bed. <laughs> you I need do to create this. one of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't do this before bed. I do this around six o'clock right. because I don't want to be thinking about things that are stressful right before yeah. bed. Right. So around six o'clock, I have just a piece of paper and I draw a line down the center. On one right. side, I write each problem or issue that's going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side of it, with a line, I write one step in the solution. Not the whole solution, uh, one step that I can do the next day. So right. if my son Cooper is having a problem at school, yeah. instead of me trying to figure out all the different things I can do, I write down call Cooper's teacher tomorrow. Now I know I'm addressing that issue. My stress level is down. I don't have to think about it anymore because I know I've already got the step that's going to bring me closer to that solution. Yes. And I just go down the list and my stress becomes less and less. Now, to be fair, I do several other things to help me with my stress. Okay. So number one is I do meditations in the morning. Right. I do about 35 to 40 minutes of meditation. Um, I was never a meditator, to be honest with you. I'm terrible at it, or I used to be. Um, but I bought this thing. Um, it's called a Muse headband, M-U-S-E. I have no association with the company. Um, it's a headband that you wear on your head and you put earbuds in and it walks you through how to meditate while monitoring your brainwave. So it knows oh. when you're really hitting those good states. Wow, 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 wow. And so when you meditate and say your prayers in the morning to yeah. have a great day, guess what? You have a better day, mm -hmm. right? You know how to, yeah. right? Because you're not starting your day in a stressful state. You're starting your day in a peaceful state. So yeah. as the stressors come, they, be, they feel less and less. Yes. Then when you delineate them out with a plan, right? Mm -hmm. Then they're even less, right? Yes. Then if you don't drink caffeine, <laughs> right? But think about it. Caffeine elevates anxiety. Yes, yes. Right? And so when you're writing this list and drinking a Red Bull, are you really relaxing? I don't <laughs> think you are. Right? You know, this is so good, but you are so bad, but this is so good. <laughs> right? So then, so let me tell you the problem that happens then. 
right? For many entrepreneurs yes. is they're gunning, they're running, they're gunning. And then they tr- they go to use a substance to help them calm down. Yep. Could be alcohol, could be cannabis, could be a natural mm-hmm. sleep aid, could be a whole host of different things, yeah. right? And so when we think about that as an option, I would argue that there are better options to reduce our stress, Yeah. right? Talk wow. therapy, right? Exercise, mm. right? Stretching, yoga, yeah. right? meditation, right? There are many, many, many different things that will allow for people to reduce their stress during the mm. daytime, which will really be helpful. And you don't have to resort to, you know, Johnny Walker Black, you know, type yeah, of thing, of or a Budweiser yeah. or whatever, because to be fair, it's only temporary. Indeed. Right? And when you think about, uh, like, let's use alcohol as an example, mm-hmm. which by mm-hmm. the way, is the number one sleep aid in the world. More people use alcohol to help them fall asleep than anything else. My God. It's terrible because not, it does make you fall asleep, but the quality well, of this your is, sleep well, this is, is reduced. Listen, listen, like I'm hearing you talking in my head. Hearing <laughs> you talking in my head. Because yes, I might have something to drink before I go to sleep. Nothing too strong. I don't like strong stuff. Mm. But then I would not have deep sleep. I would feel right. very much mm. like, um, yeah, some sort of agitation or something happening. I wouldn't really feel, you know, that that, that, that I'm doing this really well. I mean, I, I sort of, like I can understand what you're saying when it comes to our lifestyle and peak performance. Let's get to peak performance. Let's do it. Because this podcast is called How to Live Like a Champion. Absolutely. I have got so many people that are listening that are entrepreneurs and they're like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do it now. I want to get cracking. I want to do it right now. So we're all into peak performance. We're all into let's get it done. Let's get it done now. Let's get it done quick. Um, Forget about sleep. Forget about rest. Forget about this. Let's just get, let's just do the work. Let's just do it. Just get it done. And I am so guilty of that. And then I, I tell you, then I can't sleep because I am overtired. Right. And I am thinking about all of what I'm doing and thinking of all what's going on and just everything else. And then, and this is what I want you to talk about. Then the problem starts mm. because of lack of sleep, because of, of mm. stress to do with lack of sleep. What are some of the concerns have you seen that entrepreneurs need to listen to today. If you, it's not only about being operating at peak performance or at peak efficiency, but it's also about the long-term effects on your mind and your body and everything else to do with you being well. What have you seen as some of the negative effects of people not listening to what you're saying? Well, Quite a few. Um, so, you know, so first of all, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is sleep disorders, right? Mm-hmm. So people who may have undiagnosed sleep wow. disorders, a big one, sleep apnea, right? So when we talk about performance, one of the very first things that I do with all my high performance is I do a screen to make sure that they don't have sleep apnea, narcolepsy, restless leg syndrome, right. things like that. Cause those are formal sleep disorders. And by the way, there are like five or 6,000 sleep specialists in the United States. Okay. So they're not that hard to find. They're in almost every community. Any hospital has a sleep lab in this country now, unless mm. it's a small, small, small community mm, hospital. Mm, mm, Almost mm. every hospital has got a sleep lab. So there are sleep specialists there, right? Mm-hmm. So if you suspect because you're snoring, you're waking up tired, low energy, and you know that it's not that you only slept four hours last night, right? So you, you go, you get six, seven, eight hours of sleep and you feel terrible after yeah. two or three days of it, you're probably gonna wanna talk to your doctor because it's the quality and that could have a sleep disorder underneath it. Let's say you've talked with your doctor and there's no suspicion of a sleep disorder, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. you do want to use sleep to help you with your performance, right? What are the biggest mistakes that people make? The very biggest one is not sleeping based on something called your chronotype. So Mm -hmm. people may not have heard of what a chronotype is, but you've actually heard of the concept before. The concept is if anybody's ever called you an early bird or a night owl, those are chronotypes. Right. And here's the thing that's so fascinating, and nobody knows this, chronotypes are genetic. They're in your genes, they're in your DNA. Um, And honestly, I can look at your 23andMe or your ancestry.com data, and I can tell you basically when to go to bed. 
Now, to be fair, not everybody else knows how to do that, but I know how to do that actually quite easily. And so when you end up sleeping in what I call your chronotypical swim lane, if you will, like mm. your schedule where you're supposed to be, yeah. the consolidation of that sleep occurs because the quality improves because you're sleeping at the right time. And so the big magic here is if you if people are listening, go over to chronoquiz.com Spell it, please. Spell it, please. Spell it, please. Spell it, please. C H R O N O Q U I Z dot com. Mm -hmm. And so it only takes about two or three minutes. Yeah. And you will learn if you are an early bird, what I call a lion, a night owl, what I call a wolf, somebody in the middle, which is a bear, or somebody with sleep difficulty, which I call a dolphin. Once you understand which category that you're in, yep. I send you a bunch of great information that teaches you when should you drink coffee, wow. when should you go to bed, when should you have alcohol, wow. things of that nature. And so it's all based on your hormones. So as an example, mm. if you, let's say you have a partner who's an early bird and you're a night owl, right? Mm. The early bird wakes up at six o'clock in the morning, They're, all of their hormones for sleep shut down and all of their hormones for wake start up, okay? That their partner wakes up at eight o'clock and that's when all of their sleep uh, hormones shut off and all of their wake hormones turn on. So uh, they're delayed by two hours of the person who woke up earlier, right? Once you know what your personal schedule is, you can pick and choose what time <laughs> in a 24 hour cycle, literally to do anything. I'm laughing, I'm laughing because my husband, as soon as he hits the sack, he's gone. Mm -hmm. And I have to sit there and I have to that's process. That's not a good sign by the way. That's not a good sign. You know, Oprah really? Winfrey said the same thing to me. When I was on her show, she turned to me and she said, Stedman falls asleep in like a minute, 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. She, and she was upset about it. That's actually a sign of sleep deprivation. <sighs> people shouldn't fall asleep that quickly. I mean, there are some people who are quick sleepers to be yeah. fair, but most people, if you fall asleep in under five minutes, you ain't getting enough sleep. We, Yep. wow. Yeah. So just because he falls asleep quick may mean he's a good sleeper, but probably means he needs to get a little bit more sleep. And again, when you look and understand which one of these categories you're in, mm -hmm. it becomes very, very obvious um, because, mm. uh, you know, different things happen with different hormones. Yeah. Yeah. A perfect yeah. example is intimacy, right? Lots of people always want to know, Michael, what's the perfect time yeah. to be yeah. intimate, right? Uh, well, so here's what's interesting is it depends on your partner, right? And so... <laughs> Right, and so some partners, like if so, if one person was an early bird partner and one person was a night owl partner, what do you do, mm. right? Because the, the hormones are so off. So let me give everybody a quick primer on how to understand when you should be most sexually active. So first of all, you need five hormones to successfully um, have intimacy. You need estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Um, adrenaline and cortisol all need to be high, and melatonin, the sleep hormone, needs to be low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'll give you one guess what your hormone profile looks like at about 1030 at night, it's the opposite, <laughs> right? Melatonin is high yes. and all those other things are low. Right. Right? So that's, that's clue number one of what could be going on. Now, if you're in a relationship with uh, a male, here's the other question. What do most men wake up with in the morning? An erection. Mm. If that is not mother nature telling you when to use that thing, <laughs> I don't know what is. Right? I love it. I love it. <laughs> right? So thinking through these ideas of when is our hormone at the right time can be very, very beneficial in a whole host of activities. And believe uh -huh. it or not, not just even health related activities. It can do with exercise. You can find a perfect yeah. time to exercise. You can find the perfect time to eat a cheeseburger um, yeah. that your body will metabolize it the fastest. Like it's pretty amazing. And wow. to be clear, wow. there's over 220 <laughs> studies in the book. So wow. I didn't run all the studies, clearly. I aggregated all the data in the research. The book is called The Power of When, <laughs> W-H-E-N. Um, and that's where we have the, and you'll see it if you take the chrono quiz. And yep. I have a new book coming out yep. um, in December called Energize, How to Go from Dragging Ass to Kicking It in 30 Days. <laughs> You know what? That every entrepreneur needs that. Like every entrepreneur on the planet needs that book. Yeah, absolutely. What is called Energize. How to go from dragging ass to kicking it in 30 <laughs> days. Okay. And so what we do is we use movement and sleep together. And we I created a program with my co-author. So you don't have to do an hour and a half workout at the gym right. to have energy. We teach you 
five different times to do five minutes worth of exercise in your day, which will continue, will maintain your energy level all day long Start again. and allow you to fall asleep. Give us the book again and tell us about it a bit more. Give us a book. Name again. Name again. Energize. Ooh. It's available on for pre-order on Amazon right now. Mm -hmm. um, how to go from dragging ass to kicking it in 30 days. Dr. Michael Bruce and my co-author is Stacey Griffith. And she is the founding trainer of a company called Soul Cycle. So I don't know if you ever heard of Soul Cycle. They have the spin classes. Um, so she was the very first trainer there. My God. Let's talk about this really quickly before we close off. Let's talk about this book, Energize. How to, to go um, from mm -hmm. dragging ass, dragging ass to kicking ass in 30 days. Exactly. So how do I do that? What does so that what, mean? Tell us. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. So remember those four chronotypes that I was just talking about? Mm -hmm. We take that data and we put body type data on top of it. So if you Ooh. think back to high school, remember there was an endomorph, a mesomorph and an ectomorph, right? Mm -hmm. And so the one of them was long and lean. One of them was kind of V-shaped and a little bit more thick. And then one of them was more pear-shaped and had a little bit more yeah. kind of weight to them, right? So here's what's interesting about that. When you delve into that data, that actually has to do with metabolism. And so the long and lean have super fast metabolisms. The mediums have medium metabolisms yep. and the people that have a little bit more to them have slower metabolisms. But when you layer that on top of chronotypes mm -hmm. and you give them certain movement schedules, we can bypass all of it and give people energy throughout the day. It's it's quite remarkable. Wow. Yeah, we're I mean, super this, excited this, about it. This, like this, 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 uh, look, Dr. Michael, this, this is the thing that the entrepreneurs need right now. Like I need 100%. this right now because when I'm done at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired, you know, because I'm doing four businesses at the same time. Um, even though you've got staff doing it, but you got to keep, you know, you've got to keep on the ball. You've got to keep things oh, yeah. you know, going. But this, this is what we need. We need to know how to keep that keep metabolism. that me Yeah, across, yeah. across the day. So, yeah, it's so funny because, you know, people think of me as a sleep doctor. You know, they're like, why are you talking about energy now, Michael? And I'm like, mm. what do you think you get energy from? You get energy yes. from good, high quality sleep. Yes. Right? And, and look, I, not to bring up a, a topic that, you know, isn't as positive, but look, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so here's one of the things that's going on is people are not moving the way they used to. Yes. Because of quarantine, because yes. gyms had been closed previously, things of that nature. And so what's happening is, remember, sleep is recovery. If you don't do anything to recover from, you ain't going to sleep too well, right? Ooh. So you have to expend energy to then regenerate energy, right? Oh. That's how that works. And, and so just, just this, this alone, just this alone. If everybody get just this alone, sleep is, is recovery. recovery. And, and it is recovery from so much. Everything. Wow. Mental, social, spiritual physical, wow. cognitive. Sleep wow. is recovery. And so here's the thing. It's like, you know, if you were an athlete, wow. right? And you were, and you were a really good one, right? Let's say you're a world champion athlete, right? And you're, maybe you're in the Olympics. The night before the Olympics, would you, would you go out and party till three o'clock in the morning? Mm. No, of course not. You would have a regimen, you would be in bed, you'd be ready to perform, right? We're all in the Olympics every day. Every entrepreneur Absolutely. is running for those Olympic trials every mm. single day. You want wow. to be at your best. Why would you ever, it's healing. Sleep is healing. Ooh. Why would you ever not want to heal before you go do your thing, right? Why would you conserve the amount of time that your body can heal? Because then you don't get full healing. And then you're, you know what I'm saying? Like you're at a disadvantage automatically. Wow. Wow. Look. Sleep is recovery. Sleep is healing. Get ready to heal. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> and, and, and remember, guys, I want everybody to remember that, you know, while sleep is a physical process that anatomically happens in our body, it's also cognitive. Yes. It's mental. It's spiritual, right? All of that, if you're not sleeping well, that's a sign that something is going on in your life. Ooh. Okay. It could, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be mental health. But if you are consistently not sleeping well, then you need to take a, take a, a pause. What can right? people do if they, need, if, if they need 
to sleep better? How can they reach you? How can they get in touch sure. with you to help them? Because you are America's sleep doctor. Come on, tell us how they reach you. So super easy to find. If you just go to the sleep doctor.com, that's my website. Not too hard to remember. Um, <laughs> I also have a new supplement out that can be very helpful for people either if they have difficulty falling asleep or I have a second one for people if they have difficulty in the middle of the night. I'm the oh. only person that's ever actually created a supplement specifically for the middle of the night. Um, that being said, it's called Sleep Doctor PM, uh, kind of a play <laughs> on words there. Um, and um, that could be helpful for people as well. Um, but I'm also available on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and I do lots of Instagram lives. We put different types of tips on each one of them. So check them all out because you'll find different information in different places. Um, and we're always interested, you know, uh, send me a, a, an email, check mm -hmm. out some of my blog articles. Um, we really do a great job of getting more and more quality information mm -hmm. out there. And the goal is just to help people sleep better. Wow. Like I'm just thinking of my bed now. <laughs> thinking, right? I mean, I'm thinking I need to pay, I need to pay attention to this and I need to go and get some sleep. Well, yeah, well, you know, when you talk about beds, the number one question that I get asked is what bed should I buy? Do you believe that? Wow. Number one. Second question is how do I turn off my brain at night? Right. So I'll answer both of them before we jump. Okay. So, so let's do that. Let's do yeah. that. How uh -huh. how do we turn off our brain at night? How do we stop? Uh -huh. Yeah. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. The very first thing that you do is you look at the clock and you instantly do the mental math, right? And you say, oh crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. 3 30 in the morning. I got to get up at 6 30. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Right. And you try to force yourself to sleep. Yes. If, if people only get one thing from my from my talk with you today. Remember, sleep is a lot like love. The less you look for it, the more it shows up, oh. right? When you're trying to sleep, you cause increased heart rate, autonomic arousal, all of these things. But wow. if you can just relax in the middle of the night, the natural sleep process will take over. Now, now here's the thing. Come on, Michael. That's an easy thing for you to say, but how does anybody do that in the middle of the night, right? So, so you, what you have to do is become positive. You have to flip the script, okay? Because the negativity in the middle of the night is never going to be helpful for you. So instead of that, there are two facts that I'm gonna explain to you. Fact number one is that by lying even awake in bed for an hour, from a rejuvenation standpoint, it's worth about 20 minutes of sleep, wow. okay? So you're not doing your body a disservice by lying there awake. So that's number one thing to remember. So here's what you do is when you look at that clock, here's what you say, it's 3.30 and I have to get up at 6.30. This is awesome. I don't have to get up right this second. If I want to, I can lie here. And Dr. Bruce told me if I lie here for an hour, it's worth about 20 minutes of my sleep. So I'm just gonna wow. chill out and relax here and see what happens. And here's what happens is you lower your heart rate and the natural sleep process will take back over because it's the anxiety mm -hmm. in the middle of the evening of you stressing out about not sleeping that's causing you not to sleep. But you by know what? becoming you more know, positive, it works. This is so good because I've, 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 the last five years, I have been determined to not have my phone in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I leave great, my phone in the office. Mm -hmm. So that's there good. is no clock for me to look up to and watch mm -hmm. while I'm in the Even bedroom. Better. I just I leave it. it at the, I'm not so. And then when it's time to get up, I have to get up and then go to the office because the alarm goes off. So right. then it means I'm already up, but I don't right. have anything next to my bed telling me what time it is. Good. And I, and I used to do this as well. I used to get up and, and then I would get up and then I would put on a TV. And I'll be like, what time is it on the TV? And I said, nope, I am not putting don't on the TV. That. I don't care what time it is. And then somehow psychologically, I get better sleep when I don't watch the time. Right. Why is it? I mean, our body tells us these things, Dr. It's Michael. Why is it we don't anxiety. listen? But why it's, we don't listen to our bodies? Right. So, so many people, what happens is, is that the stress comes in before the good information. So it's the middle of the night, you're half asleep and you're like, crap, I just want to get back to bed. You know, what do I need to do that? I have patients who used to go and find a whiskey bottle and take a shot of whiskey in the middle of the night. 
to put themselves back to sleep. Terrible idea, terrible, wow. terrible idea, right? The second thing that people need to understand is um, blood sugar. So this is a new one that many people don't understand. But if you had your last meal at like, let's say 6.30, 7 o'clock, and you're waking up at 3.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. that's eight and a half hours without any food. It's called break, break fast yeah. for a reason. Your yeah. body has been fasting. And if you have low blood sugar, it could be a problem. So yeah. one of the things I talk about with people is guava leaf tea. Not guava mm. fruit, not guava juice, but guava leaf tea. There's two studies to show that it actually helps keep your blood sugar stable <laughs> um, all night long. The other option is uh, raw honey. So a teaspoon of raw honey, not the kind you get from the bear in the grocery store. Like you gotta go to the farmer's market, it's gotta have the honey come in at the whole thing. To be clear, um, what seems to happen is when the honey is unprocessed, it takes your body longer to digest it and work it through. Oh. Only a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, because there's a lot of sugar in there. Um, to be clear, if you're diabetic or keto or paleo, you can't do the honey. It's a bad, bad, bad wow. idea. Um, but you can do the guava leaf tea. Um, now, looking at the bed, what kind of bed should I buy is a very, very important question. So on my website, on thesleepdoctor.com, yep. we actually have a guide that, te that walks people through this process. I got to tell you something, honey. I've been asked this question so many times. It's unbelievable. And so we, we created a, a guidebook, basically. Mm. Like, this is what you need to think about here. This is what you need to think about here. This is what you need to think about here. And I've rated many of the mattresses um, right. so that are out there. So now we can get a little bit of data, a little bit of consistency across the mm. boards, things like that. Um, and I just started a new position with a company called Purple. Mm -hmm. So you may have heard of Purple Mattress. Um, they are really amazing beds. We have one here at the house and I got to be honest with you. I love it. My brother just came in town and I put one in our guest room and he came into me this morning and he was like, you aren't kidding. That thing is pretty good. <laughs> right. And he's a skeptic of all skeptics. Um, so, uh, you know, for folks out there, if you're in the market for a new mattress, number one, check out the sleepdoctor.com. Cause I can give you some guidelines as how to shop and what to look for things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but if, if I had to give a blanket recommendation for, for one product right now, it would probably be purple. Um, just because it's got, it's a great product. It does a lot of really interesting and good things. Um, for people who are interested in a higher end product, yep. um, there are some higher end beds. I personally, um, like a product called Haston's. Um, this is a mm. Swedish brand that, um, these are the people that, uh, actually, uh, invented the box spring and invented the bed frame. They're a 1852 company. So they've been around wow. for over 170 years making beds. And so if you're interested in spending a little bit more money and having just an unbelievable, amazing product, that is definitely, you know, I'm laughing bed. because we literally just went out and bought a new mattress. We have an amazing bed. It's huge. And we went and bought a new mattress last nice. week. And oh. it's, it's probably about three grand for the mattress. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's and and it has all of those springs and whatever else in it. And, mm -hmm. and you know what? I, I thought we spend a third of our lives in our bed. I, That's I why I go, why is it we don't pay attention to having a really good mattress when we spend a third of our lives in our bed? It, I, you know, on, honestly, I ask this question all the time. It's amazing to me. Like people will spend a hundred thousand dollars on a Porsche. Yeah. Right. And they'll drive it. What percentage of the day? It's Maybe true. 5% of the day. It's true. Right. You know, whereas when you're in bed, if you think about just the percentage of your day, yeah. even if you're only in bed for six hours, you're still there for 25% of your day. This is I mean, it. Do you realize it's the only piece of furniture that you use every single day for extended <laughs> periods of time? Right. Like, I know people that would spend $10,000 on a couch. Yeah. You know, one of those super nice yeah. leather yeah. kind of yeah. cool things. Like I get all that and, it, and they're beautiful and I'm not saying anything against them, but if you're going to spend 10 grand on a couch, you should probably think about spending something like that on a bed. On a bed. I'm telling you, I mean, when we, the, the previous one we bought, sort of bed and mattress, it came mm -hmm. up to about eight, eight grand. And at mm -hmm. the time I thought 8,000 you know, pound, this is pounds. Worth it. Worth I it. thought 8,000 pounds, that's about, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, hold on. You are spending a third of your life in the bed. Exactly. Exactly. You know, a third of your life, you go in that thing every single day. Mm -hmm. you, and, and it's okay for you to spend money and buy this and buy that and go on a posh holidays and come right. back and you have backaches. This is ridiculous. Exactly. I, it's crazy. Like, just don't do one vacation 
and buy yourself a great bed, <laughs> right? Yes. It'll it'll prove it'll prove out to be a much better. It's oh. really interesting, you know. People spend a lot of money on on experiences, mm -hmm. and they always try to find the cheapest products. Yeah. And in this particular instance, I like mm -hmm. to follow my grandfather's advice. Who, um, uh, you know, bless him. He w was alive till he was 103 in 10 months. Wow. And he said there are three things, Michael, in life that you spend good money on. He said shoes, eyeglasses, and mattresses. I was like, you are right, Grandpa Jack. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Shoes, eyeglasses, eyeglasses and, and mattresses. mattresses. <gasps> You're so right. Right? Think about it. Like, those are the things that you want top notch. I mean, you, you use it every day. You want it to be comfortable. You want it to be comfortable because that's, that, I mean, that's what you're using to walk around. Your right. eyes, you need to protect your eyes. You need to protect, you know, spend as much as you can so that you don't strain your eyes. If you, exactly. That's you using it every single day. And then you sleep. Oh, right. I'm going to go on this weekend. I'm going to buy some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I don't know about that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that was the advice that I was giving there. Although you took it in a good way. My wife would probably agree with you just so that we're clear. <laughs> oh my God, this, oh my God. Like we could go on forever. Thank you so much. Of course, it's my pleasure. I wanna ask one last question. Of course. What does living like a champion mean to you? Because I, 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 I mean, I've seen legacy. I've seen sort of what you're doing to the world. So, you know, we've mm -hmm. sort of talked all about that covered all of that what does living like a champion really mean to you mm -hmm. it means balance that's Ooh. what i've learned i'm 53 years old and i used to think it was winning and success and you know financial gains or what have you and i would argue that winning is balance wow right and that's where freedom comes from freedom mm -hmm. comes from balance and that's what i think and that's where joy comes from Mm. right so when you have balance you have freedom and when you have freedom you have joy and i want as much joy in my life as possible oh, <laughs> i love it i love so it how do we right so how do we balance right we have to have sleep right we have to have movement we have to have spirituality we have to have time with our relationships and so we make time we look into our schedules mm -hmm. and we create time i live by a very strict schedule and I'll tell you why, because it allows me to get all of the things in that yeah. I need to do. Let me Absolutely. explain to you my morning routine before we go. So I wake up around 6.15 every morning. Um, I grab my dog, I get dressed, grab my dog, I feed him and we go outside for a walk. Um, he and I do a 15 minute walk. And at the end of that walk, I sit down on the ground with him and I pet him for three to five minutes, just me and him. Unconditional love early in the morning. There's nothing better than that. I've already gotten my daily sunshine and I've already gotten my walk in. Then I go and I get my supplements and I have my green drink and my supplements to make sure that my body is set. And then I do breath work and meditation with a group of men. So we have an online community and we do breath work in the mornings and meditations. After that, I'll do my, my next exercise routine, which is kind of my routine for the day. Take my shower and I'm ready to go by 8.45, 9 o'clock. When you start your day like that, you can't lose. Right? It's awesome. I love it. I love it. Do you know what I'm hearing? This is for me. Okay. Everybody is listening. I know it's for you guys as well. But you know what? This is for me. I need to reset. Mm -hmm. I need to reset. I need to just reset. I need to just pull back, not do less, just reset for myself. And I think for all of our listeners, listening to what you're saying, because sleep is the most important thing. It's recovery, it's healing. It's what will get you, you know, the healing you need. It is being able to stop and reset. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where you are at right now, it's just to stop and reset. Yep. And when you do the reset, be thoughtful, mm. right? What, what brings you joy? Mm. What are the steps that you need to take to get there? I know that I feel better when I'm at a certain weight. Mm. I know that I feel better when I do a certain amount of meditation. I know yes. I feel better when I do a certain amount of exercise every yes. day. I was in a meeting um, uh, not that long ago with a guy named Tony Horton. So many people may remember he wrote, he created a, a program called P90X, which was on TV all, yeah, of, yeah, uh, all yeah. around the world, all around the world. And I asked him, I said, well, how many days a week do you exercise in order to get to the stage where you're at? 
Tony. And he said, you know, everybody likes to ask me that question. And so I always answer it with another question, which is how many days a week do you diet? It's like every day. He was like, I think that's your answer for exercise. And it hit me like a, like a stone. I was like, wow, we yeah. really should move every, every single day. Oh, it's you know so, what? so important. Sometimes I just, in, at the end of the day, I just say to my husband, let's just go for a walk. And I just, we, yep. we, we go to the, to the hills and just, and just walk and breathe. Breathe and good just walk air. And breathe. Oh, just Have get away from everything. Sunshine on your face. And, yeah, and just walk and A little breathe. bit of breeze. Look, here's a funny thing, and we'll end with this. They took 20, there's a real study. They took 25 insomniacs, um, hardcore insomniacs, and they mm. took them camping, camping for three weeks. No electronics, very stable schedule. Wow. The end of the three weeks, nobody had insomnia anymore. Nobody. Makes you think. Food for time, for time. time for a reset. It's true. It is time for a reset. It's time for reset for me. I'm listening to this. I hope everybody else is listening to it, but I'm listening to it. It's time for reset. I'm going to be sharing a lot of these videos. And, and yeah, this is this is so good. Dr. Michael, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thank you for the information. I'm going to share this to the world. And guys, you know, I just, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my ultimate pleasure. And really quickly, once again, if people want to get the new book, it's called Energize. It's available on Amazon for pre-order. And if you head over to my website, thesleepdoctor.com, you'll learn a whole lot. Thanks. And you're welcome. Well, guys, you've heard it here from the one and the only Dr. Michael. Like if nothing else, sleep affects everything you do in your life, this is what he said, your organs, your emotions, every single thing, your brain, your just everything. Wake up, you'll have more energy. You think of sleep, as he said, in stages, it's not just about you dropping to sleep and that's it. Have a routine. What does your morning routine look like? What's your evening routine look like? I'm gonna change my routine, let me tell you, okay? What does all of that look like? Because there are, as he said, there are a lot of undiagnosed sleep disorders. Look at sleep apnea and all of these other things, reach out to him, take the quiz, chronoquiz.com. Go to that website, take the quiz, at least understand why you are doing what you're doing. Are you a lion? Are you a wolf? Are you a bear? Are you a dolphin? Who are you? Where are you? Why do you need to do this? You want to have better intimacy. You want to have better exercise. You want to understand, you know, your how, your power, your now, your wow. This is what you need to do. The book is called The Power of When. That's the other book. Go get it. And don't forget, go to thesleepdoctor.com and get this new book, Energize. How to go from dragging um, ass to kicking ass in 30 days. Like I am telling everybody they need to go and get that. Okay. So you guys go. And remember, look at it, this whole aspect of sleep. Sleep, as he says, is recovery. Sleep, as he says, is healing. Are you ready to heal? Then you need to go to the sleepdoctor.com. Send him a message. Tell him that you've heard it here and that you need some help. You need a new bed. You need more sleep. And more importantly, you need to reset, depending on where you are. Reach out to him, get support, get help. Go to chronoquiz.com, take the quiz today, and then definitely go to that, that uh, book. It's on Amazon. Energize. Go and get it and just send him a very quick message. This is Kamalita here from kamalita.com. He says, sleep is a lot like love, okay? You need to go after it. And the more you go after it, sometimes you don't get it because you are not focused on what you should be doing. Focus, focus, lie in bed, rest. Don't forget guava leaf. Don't forget raw honey. I mean, also check with your doctors, obviously, as he said, but for living like a champion, he said, it's all about balance. Do you have balance? If you don't have balance, you need to go to coronaquiz.com and you need to go to the sleepdoctor.com and send him a very quick message. This is Kamalita here from Kamalita.com saying, I'll see you soon. And remember, he did encourage me to buy some shoes. You know, I will see you at the top. That's it. That was awesome.